Hello students. So welcome to the lecture series on fast Fourier transform. This is part three of the lecture series. We have already covered two parts, and the lecture series is brought to you by Ed Amigo team. In this lecture series, we will be talking about Redix three, Redix four, FFT, and we will be talking about how to find how to find the number of complex multiplication and complex addition in radix 3 and radix 4 okay so uh, uh, according to if you look at the past year questions of gate and other competitive exams then you will analyze that from fast Fourier transform the only question is actually based on this uh, concept that is the number of complex multiplications and the number of complex additions okay so our motive while studying radix 3 and radix 4 will be only focusing on this that is we have to find the complex multiplications and complex additions while doing radix 3 and radix 4 so that is the motive so first of all let me tell you the motive and uh, we will stick to this only uh, i will be explaining you radix 3 and radix 4 in a elaborate manner in this video itself but uh, that you don't have to note each and everything okay the only thing that is important is this that is this is our motive okay i will be explaining you complete radix 3 and radix 4 but our motive is only this much okay and if you are able to gain this much from the video then then also it's sufficient okay you just have to find the number of complex multiplications and complex additions in radix 3 and radix 4 that is a motive okay now the another motive so this motive number one another motive is so we know that in case of n equals to r to power 3 uh, sorry r to power m where it is radix r with m number of stages okay but suppose if n is not equal to r to power m for example if n is equals to 6 okay or is n, n equals to 12 so in these cases these values n cannot be, be written as in the format of r to power m so how to find the dft uh, so we know how to find the dft but uh, um, i will be telling you how to find the dft using fft and how to find the number of complex multiplications and complex additions in such fft design okay so these two are very very important motives for the video and they are very important for the competitive exams like gate and other competitive exam for electronics students so let's start with radix 3 So radix 3 means let us assume that n is equals to 9 that is 3 to power 2 so we will have radix 3 fft with the two stages okay so let us assume xn is the input with x0 x1 till x8 as the input and we have to find dft using radix 3 fft okay so we will write dft formula xk equals to n going from 0 to 8 xn w 9 to power nk okay now we will break this summation into three parts n equals to 0 to 2 x of 3 n w 9 to power 3 nk so here we are actually taking the terms input terms that is x0 x3 and x6 so three terms i have taken similarly the next is x of 3n plus 1 w 9 to power 3n plus 1 into k so here we have taken the input terms that is x1 
x4 and x7 and the last n equals to 0 to 2 x of 3n plus 2 w9 to power 3n plus 2 to power k so here we have taken the terms x2 x5 and x8 okay now okay so let us say that okay so let us say that this is so this term is capital x1 k the second term okay. so the second term okay i have to make some modifications here okay so uh, let me write this uh, one more time so capital x k is equals to summation n equals to 0 to 2 x of 3 n w 9 to power 3 n k plus so i will modify this term okay so summation n equals to 0 to 2 x of 3 n plus 1 w 9 to power 3 n k multiplied by whole getting multiplied by so whole getting multiplied by w 9 to power k and the third term summation n equals to 0 to 2 x of 3 n plus 2 w 9 to power 3 n k whole multiplied by w 9 to power 2 k okay now this term is called x 1 k i think i need a, another term so this is called x1 k this another term is called x2 k this third term is called x3 k okay so x k can be written as x1 k plus w9 to power k x2 k plus w9 to power 2k x3 k. okay so this is my equation now as we know that x1k is equal to this summation so i can see that x1k is equal to this okay so uh, since here you don't need to just copy all the thing that i'm telling you you just need to understand because the ultimate motive is to find the number of computations the complex additions and the complex multiplications okay so that's why i have just uh, taken uh, copied it from the book directly because uh, everything you don't need to write okay so i can see that since the equation is this so x1k is this similarly x2k is this similarly x3k is this okay so it's easily visible so this is the x1k so it is written here this is your x2k it is written here okay and this is your x3k it is written here okay now let us say that this is equation number one so equation number one is in the complete format written here so x0 x1 x2 x3 x4 x5 x6 x7 x8 so all are written here okay now since we know that capital x3 will be equals to x13 plus w9 to power 3 x23 plus w9 to power 6 x33 now since x1 k x2 k and x3 k are actually three point dft okay why they are three point dft okay 
now if you see that w9 to power 3 nk is actually equal to w3 to power nk okay they are similar to it so we can say that x1k x2k and x3k they are three point dfts of the terms so x1k has the input terms x0 x1 and x uh, sorry x0 x3 and x6 x2k has terms x1 x x1 x4 and x7 and x3k has the input terms that is x2 x5 and x8 so these are three point dfts okay they are three point dft all these three so since they are three point dft so x13 will be equal to x10 so you can see it here x13 is equals to x10 x23 is equals to x20 x33 is equals to x30 similarly when you write capital x4 so you will get x14 plus w9 to power 4 x24 w9 to power 8 x34 and since x14 will be equal to x11 so that's why there's a modification in this equation similarly x15 will be x2 so this is the modification and you can see it here all the equations okay so everything is not important i'm just making you understand all these things all these equations okay now so i will copy it okay so now if i draw all these equations so th these are the equations this is equation number 1 for example this is 2 this is 3 and this is 4 okay now this equation these three equations which are i am highlighted with orange so they are actually drawn here so this is the equation 1 drawn here that is where we are getting so where we are getting x1 k from x0 x3 and x6 similarly here i am getting x2 k from x1 x4 and x7 here i am getting x3 k from x2 x5 and x6 so from here i am getting x1 k x2 k and x3 k and from x1 k x2 k x3 k i am getting here capital x k okay so equation number 4 is plotted here equation number 1 is here equation number 2 is here and equation number 3 is here okay now as we have seen in radix 2 there was a butterfly okay and the butterfly was actually a pattern of the computations which are repeated in radix 2 we have seen that in the part 2 of the lecture series now in the radix 3 if you look at then this is the basic computation that is taking place okay so this is the basic computation that is taking place okay and thus this is the butterfly of the radix 3 fft okay okay and you can see that since there are two stages this stage 1 and this is stage 2 okay i will change the color so this is stage 1 and this is stage 2 so as we know that in radix 2 also the number of butterflies at each stage so number of butterflies at each stage was equal to capital n by 2 in case of radix 2 we have seen that and here we can see that since the input number is 9 so there are nine terms and thus capital n is equal to 9 here so we can see that at stage 1 there are three butterflies butterfly number 1 butterfly number 2 and butterfly number 3 okay so here also the formula is same that is the number of butterflies at each stage 
is equal to n by 3. Now let's analyze or observe closely a single butterfly of the 3 point DFT. Now I am just marking the number of butterflies in n equals to 9. Okay, So n equals to 9, radix 3 FFT this is. So this is your, okay, okay, so this is your first butterfly and marking it with orange, okay, this is your second butterfly marked with green. This is your third butterfly. Okay. Now, so marking with red the fourth butterfly. So this red one is your fourth butterfly and similarly you will find two more butterflies in the second stage. Okay. Now if you analyze a single butterfly then you can see that. So now if you look at a butterfly, so let us take, so the first butterfly is creating x0, x3 and x6 as we have seen. Now the another butterfly will be creating x1 x4 and x7. Now if I write the equations of capital X1 is equal to x11 plus x21 w91 plus x31 w92. x4 is equal to x11 plus x21 w94 x31 w9 8 similarly x7 will be equal to x11 x21 multiplied by w97 x31 multiplied by w914 now as these three terms that is w91 w94 and w97 will have no relationship with each other similarly w92 w98 and w914 will have no relationship with each other so to create capital x1 capital x4 and capital x7 that is a single butterfly we need we need six complex multiplications so i'm highlighting it with blue highlighter okay so i need six complex multiplications so a single butterfly of red x3 red x3 one butterfly one butterfly of red x3 has six complex multiplication and if you see then there are so i change the highlighter now so there are one two three four five six so six complex addition okay so this line is very very important okay this is very very important line that you should remember so if you are not uh, able to 
recall any of the thing in the lecture then also it will be okay but the only thing that is important is this that the red x3 butterfly has six complex multiplications and six complex additions now for example n is equals to 3 to power r for example or i say 3 to power m so in red x3 there will be m number of stages okay there will be m number of stages and at each stage there will be n by 3 number of butterflies so total number of complex multiplications will be total number of butterflies multiplied by 6 okay total number of butterflies multiplied by 6 now total number of butterflies will be number of butterflies in each stage that is n by 3 multiplied by number of stages multiplied by 6 similarly total number of complex additions will be n by 3 into m into 6 that is total number of butterflies multiplied by the number of complex additions per butterfly okay so this will be the answer okay so this is very very important that you can note this okay so two things are important in red x3 this is number one very important point and this is number two very important point okay so just remember this so now let's look at red x4 f50 um, so in red x4 f50 let us assume that n equals to 16 that is 14 4 to power 2 so that is it will be red x4 f50 with only two stages okay now so, so the input xn will be from x0 to x15 and xk will be xn w16 to power nk n going from 0 to 15 okay now i will break this summation into four groups so in red x Three, I broke it into three groups so here I will broke it into four groups okay. so n equals to 0 to 3 x 4 n w 16 to power 4 n plus summation n equals to 0 to 3 x 4 n plus 1 w 16 4 n plus 1 into k n equals to 0 to 3 x of 4n plus 2 w16 4n plus 2 into k n equals to 0 to 3 x of 4n plus 3 w16 to power 4n plus 3 okay okay to power k now this can be modified and it can be written as summation x of 4n w16 to power 4nk n equals to 0 to 3 plus w16 to power k summation n equals to 0 to 3 x of 4n plus 1 w16 to power 4nk plus w16 to power 2k summation n equals to 0 to 3 x of 4n plus 2 w16 to power 4nk 
W sixteen to power three k n equals to zero to two x of four n plus three W sixteen to power four n k. Now, if you look at these terms, so this will be a four point DFT, a four point DFT, and I'm uh, writing it as F one k. Okay, so I'm writing this as F one k. This this is another four point DFT that is F two k. This is four point DFT that is F three k. This is four point DFT that is F four k. So capital X k is equals to F one k plus W sixteen to power k F two k. Plus W sixteen to power two k, F three k. W sixteen to power three k, F four k. So this is the uh, division that I have done, and all these F one k, F two k, F three k, and F four k. All these are the four point DFTs. Okay. Now if I want to analyze or observe a single butterfly of radix 4 then single butterfly of radix 4 will have four outputs and the outputs will be x1 x5 x9 and x13 so these will be the outputs now if i want to write x1 then we can see that it will be equal to f11 Plus W sixteen to power one, F two one, W sixteen to power two, F three one, and uh, and the last will be W sixteen to power three, F four one. Okay. Similarly, if I write this as F one. Five and since it's a four point DFT, okay, F one K is four point DFT, so F one five will be. So first of all, I write this only. Okay, F one five plus W sixteen to power five. F two five plus W sixteen to power five. Sorry, it will be ten. F three five. Plus W sixteen to power fifteen F four five. Now since these are four point DFTs, so F one five is equals to F one one. Okay. W sixteen to power five F two one W sixteen to power ten. F three one, W sixteen to power fifteen, F four one. Now, W sixteen to power five is equals to W sixteen to power four into W sixteen to power one. So this is W sixteen to power four will be e to power minus j two pi by sixteen into four. Okay, and into W sixteen to power one. That is, this will be equal to e to power minus j pi by two. So that will be equal to. So that will be equal to minus j times of W sixteen to power one. Similarly, W sixteen to power ten will be equal to W. Sixteen to power eight multiplied by W sixteen to power two, and W sixteen to sixteen to power eight will be e to power minus j two pi by sixteen into eight into W sixteen to power two. That is minus times of W sixteen to power two. Similarly, W sixteen to power fifteen will be equal to will be equal to. W sixteen to power twelve, W sixteen to power three. 
W16 to power 12 will be e to power minus j 2 pi by 16 into 12 W16 to power 3 and this will come out to be e to power minus j uh, it will be 3 pi by 2 W16 to power 3 so that is equal to plus j times of W16 to power 3 ok so x5 can be written as f11 plus sorry ok I will put a minus j sign here so minus j w16 to power 1 f21 plus with a minus sign because w16 to power 10 we know the value so w16 to power 10 will be minus 10 so w16 to power 2 so w16 to power 2 f3 1 and the last one w16 to power 15 will be plus j times of w16 to power 3 f4 1 so x of 9 will be f11 1, 1 minus so plus with the minus sign w16 to power 1 f21 1 plus w16 to power 2 f31 1 plus with the minus sign w16 to power 3 f4 1 now the last x13 can be written as f11 1, 1 plus j w16 to power 1 f21 1 plus minus sign w16 to power 2 f31 1 plus with the minus j sign w16 to power 3 f4 1 okay you don't have to write everything you just keep uh, uh just uh, keep watching the video and keep listening the audio and uh, just try to understand the things okay the only thing that is important is the computations the complex and the uh, uh, complex multiplication and complex additions now uh, these four equations are there so x1 we know what is x1 Okay, we know x1 in this equation. This is the equation. We know x5. Okay, we know x9. So they are creating a single butterfly. Now here if we see that. So I will add a page here. Now, if we see these four equations, then we can see that. So I will have to zoom out a bit so if we look at so to create x1 x5 x9 and x13 so how many complex additions are required so first of all let's calculate the complex additions so this is addition number one two three so three additions so total number of 14 uh, sorry 12 additions so one two three four five and six seven eight and 9 10 11 and 12 so 12 complex additions okay and we can also see that there will be how many complex multiplications so f21 has to get f21 has to be multiplied by w161 f31 has to be multiplied by w16 to power 2 and f41 has to be multiplied by w16 to power 3 okay now for rest of the terms we have to multiply this product that is w16 to power 1 into f21 so we need only three terms that is w16 to power 1 f21 w16 to power 2 f31 w16 to power 3 f4 1 and for x5 if you look at then this let us say this product is p1 this product is p2 and this product is p3 so if p1 p2 p3 are generated then in x5 p1 has to be multiplied by minus j p2 by minus 1 and p3 by j for x9 p2 by uh, sorry p1 by minus 1 p2 by nothing 
and P3 by minus 1. X13 where P1 by J, P2 by minus 1 and P3 by minus J. Now a very important concept. So it's a, it's a convention that product of these three terms P1, P2 and P3 with plus J, minus J and minus 1 are not treated as complex multiplication. Okay, they are not treated as complex multiplications and thus we can see that there are only three complex multiplications in radix 4 butterfly. A very important point. So the conclusion is, so this is, this is the convention, okay. I will be explaining this, why this is not treated as a complex multiplication, okay. In just uh, the next slide it is coming, okay. So the conclusion is in uh, one butterfly of radix 4 FFT, we have three complex multiplication and 12 complex additions okay now why plus j minus j okay so this is your single butterfly and this is what i have shown here that for single butterfly you just have to multiply the terms f1 fk f f0k f1k f2k and f3k with these terms and the rest okay so plus j minus j and minus 1 are not treated as complex multiplication because that can be seen as a matrix multiplication that's why it is not calculated or it is not taken as complex multiplication okay so there's a convention you can learn this also okay now suppose n is equal to 4 to power m using radix for fft so there are m stages first point second point at each stage there will be n by 4 number of radix 4 butterfly okay so total number of complex multiplication will be okay so total number of complex multiplications will be total number of butterflies so what is the total number of butterflies that is number of stages multiplied by number of butterflies per stage multiplied by complex multiplications per butterfly that is 3 so that is 3 m n by 4 similarly total number of complex additions will be number of stages multiplied by number of butterfly butterfly per stage multiplied by 12 12 is actually the number of additions complex additions per butterfly so it will come out to be 3 n m okay so this will be more than sufficient that if you know radix 3 if you know radix 4 if you know radix 2 that is more than sufficient for gate and any competitive exams okay uh, mostly the focus should be on the total number of complex multiplications and complex additions okay now let's uh, look at one more pattern of the question that is very very good okay now suppose the question is this okay suppose n is not equal to r to power m okay that is for example n is equals to 12 or n is equals to 6 so these terms cannot be written as r to power m okay so how many so let us solve for n equal to 6 first so how many complex additions 
and multiplications for FFT design of n equals to 6 okay so I have two figures there let me copy them okay so n equals to 6 can be written as 2 into 3 or 3 into 2 okay so what is the meaning of this let me explain so first of all let me paste the figure that I have copied okay so here n is equals to 6 that is input is actually x0 to x5 so n is equals to 6 so if I write n is equals to 3 into 2 okay so it means that there are two stages and the first stage is having radix 3 butterflies and second stage has radix 4 butterflies sorry radix 2 butterflies sorry 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 radix 2 butterfly okay now this is very important okay now how many radix 2 butterflies will be there sorry how many radix 3 butterflies so this is stage 1 this is stage 1 and this is stage 2 so since stage 1 has radix 3 butterflies and so the number of radix 3 butterflies number of radix 3 butterflies in stage 1 will be capital N by 3 similarly number of radix 2 butterflies in stage 2 will be n by 2 okay now as we know the number of complex additions and multiplications in radix 3 and as we know the number of complex additions and multiplications in radix 2 so we can easily find for n equals to 6 fft design okay so if i look at the figure so the figure has So let me copy the figure again and paste it here okay so we can see that the first stage has radix 3 butterflies and thus since n equals to 6 so there will be only two butterflies so butterfly number one and butterfly number two the second stage has radix 2 butterflies and since n is equals to 6 so there are three butterflies okay so if I say the total number of complex multiplications will be now as we know that in radix 3 there are 6 complex multiplications and there are 2 such butterflies so 6 into 2 for stage 1 plus and there are 3 butterflies of radix 2 in stage 2 so 3 number of butterflies and we know that in radix 2 only one complex multiplication per butterfly so 3 into 1 so total number of complex multiplications will be 15 and the total number of additions complex additions so as we know that <clears throat> since there are two number of radix 3 butterflies and per butterfly there are six six complex additions so 2 into 6 plus three uh, butterflies of radix 2 in stage 2 and per butterfly there are two complex additions so 3 into 2 so that is 18 complex additions so like this we can solve many others uh, so let me take an example uh, okay so uh, 
in uh, in this figure there's one more thing that is being shown here that okay let me just clarify this uh, this figure also so here we have radix 2 in stage 1 and radix 3 in stage 2 so n is written as 2 into 3 okay so n that is 6 is written as 2 into 3 so radix 2 is in the first stage and radix 3 in the second stage but the number of complex additions and number of complex multiplications will not change even if we uh, change the order like here in the figure number one we have radix 2 in the first stage sorry radix 3 in the first stage and radix 2 in the second stage in figure 2 the design is almost the same but radix 2 in the first stage and radix 3 in the second stage the number of complex additions and complex multiplication will not change okay so now let's move on to another example let's move on to another example let us take an another example for example let us take n is equal to 12 so n equals to 12 is written as 4 into 3 so there will be two stages or it can be written as 2 into 2 into 3 okay so according to the question your answer will differ suppose in the question it is written that you have to design using radix 4 and radix 3 or you have to design radix 2 and radix 3 so then uh, so let us solve both so suppose you are designing using 4 into 3 so and I will not draw the figure because it will be very complicated but we have to find the number of complex additions and complex multiplications okay with the information that we have okay so let us say that in stage 1 we have radix 4 in stage 2 we have radix 3 now in radix 4 since n is equals to 12 so there will be three butterflies okay and in radix 3 since n is equals to 12 there will be four butterflies so number of number of complex multiplications total number of complex multiplications will be so in the stage 1 since there are there is radix 4 and three butterflies in radix 4 there are only three complex multiplications per butterfly so 3 into 3 will be the number of complex multiplications in first stage and we know that in the second stage there are four butterflies and it is radix 3 in radix 3 there are six complex multiplications so it is 24 plus 9 is the answer so the answer will be 33 so total number of complex additions so stage 1 is radix 4 with 3 butterflies and in radix 4 we know that there are there are 12 complex additions so 3 butterflies 12 into 3 in radix 3 second stage there are 6 complex additions and there are 4 butterflies so it is 24 plus 36 so that is 60 so this is the answer now if we solve n equals to 12 using radix 2 and 3 only so n equals to 2 into 2 into 3 so there will be 3 stages this will be radix 2 this will be radix 2 this will be radix 3 now since n is equals to 12 there are 6 butterflies n equals to 12 there are 6 butterflies n equals to 12 there are 4 butterflies now number of complex multiplications now as we know that in radix 2 butterfly single butterfly has only one complex multiplications so in stage 1 there are 6 butterflies and only one complex addition multiplication plus in 
second stage so this is stage 1 this is stage 2 this is stage 3 so in stage 2 there is radix 2 6 butterflies so 6 into 1 in third stage there are 4 butterflies radix 3 and per butterfly there are 6 complex multiplications so the total will be 6 plus 6 plus 24 that is 36 now number of complex additions now since in stage 1 there are 6 radix 2 butterflies and per radix 2 butterfly there are 2 complex additions so 2 into 6 in stage 1 2 into 6 in stage 2 and in the third stage there are 4 radix 3 butterflies so 6 into 4 that is equals to 12 plus 12 plus 36 that is 60 okay so like this we can solve the questions if in case there is any question and uh, this is the only expected question that we can ask one more topic is left here that is we have seen decimation in time FFT figures now we will be talking about decimation in frequency FFT figures and this will continue in part 4 of the lecture series so thank you guys so keep sharing these lecture series and uh, give your feedback so that we can also improve ourselves so thank you